After a long yellow flag and pit stops by all the leaders, the race is on. Yarbrough still leads, with Bobby Allison in number 15 Ford right on his bumper. Behind Allison is Waltrip's number 88. They're running better than 150 miles an hour, as if they were tied together by a tow rope. It's getting close to showdown time, and Bobby Allison wants to know just how fast Yarbrough can run. Both these men are three-time winners of the Southern 500. There are no four-time winners yet. And the battle that's shaping up right now may decide whether there's going to be one. Door handle to door handle is what they call this kind of racing. This is an amazing show. Two of the best Yarbrough can run. Both these men are three-time winners of the Southern 500. There are no four-time winners yet. And the battle that's shaping up right now may decide whether there's going to be one. Door handle to door handle is what they call this kind of racing. This is an amazing show. Two of the fastest cars and drivers on the circuit proving that Darlington really is two lanes wide. It is if you're Bobby Allison and Cale Yarbrough. Each trusts himself and the man in the next car to do the right thing at the right time. If either slides one foot, it's goodbye everybody. Waltrip stays right behind the leaders. This is historic stock car racing, and the crowd is going wild. Moving in right behind Waltrip is Donnie Allison. Waltrip bobbles and hits Allison. He's heading for the wall. Allison, stock car racing's hard luck hero, is shaken but not injured. He's led many Southern 500s, but never come home first. He gave the wall a tremendous clout. The leaders, Yarbrough and Bobby Allison, were running like two railroad trains on parallel tracks. But Waltrip, right behind them, slid, dropped down, and bumped Allison. These cars are traveling so fast that the slightest nudge will put them out of control. After the accident, Allison said, Waltrip just turned left. I didn't see any turn signal or anything. He just turned left. Allison did a great job of driving sliding across the track without hitting anybody. Dave Marcus wheels the Petty Chevrolet into the pits, ready to get the car back to Richard Petty. Dale Inman, one of the mainstays of the Petty crew, goes in the window to help Richard readjust the seat belts. Marcus held fourth place while Richard rested his injured ribs. Now, Richard wants to drive the closing laps at Darlington. Allison's car is towed in. The track is clear, and the race is on. 100 laps to go. Yarbrough in number 11 Chevrolet still shows the way. Waltrip, thanks to a fast pit stop, is second. Richard Petty and Bobby Allison are close behind in positions three and four. It's still anybody's race, and all four drivers have a special desire to win. Yarbrough wants to be the first man to win the Southern 500 four times. A victory would also give him a big lead for NASCAR's national championship. Waltrip has won the Rebel 500 on this track, but not the granddaddy of them all, the Southern 500. A victory would add to his national reputation. Richard Petty has switched from his familiar Dodge to a Chevrolet, trying to get back in the winning groove. He's won the Southern 500 only once in his brilliant career. Bobby Allison in fourth spot also has three Southern 500 victories. Like Yarbrough, he wants to be the first man to win four. There goes Waltrip challenging for the lead. Yarbrough seems to back off and lets Waltrip go by. Yarbrough may have a lot of reasons for easing off the throttle. He may not want to tangle with Waltrip, remembering what happened to Donnie Allison a few minutes ago. Or... He may want to watch Waltrip to see how he handles the tricky Darlington turns. Yarbrough may also be playing a psychological game. If Waltrip goes all out to pass, then is repassed, he might give up the fight. Yarbrough challenges Waltrip and then backs off. Bobby Allison, number 15, one of the four major challengers for the lead, is behind the pit wall and probably finished for the day. The last scheduled pit stops are coming up, and Waltrip is first into the pits. Garbro leads, but he too will have to make a pit stop soon. Waltrip's crew starts refueling before the car comes to a full stop. Aircraft type fuel connectors are used to save time. Outside tires are changed to give Waltrip a better bite on the track. 
With outside tires and enough gas to run the distance, Waltrip rolls out in just under 14 seconds. Waltrip stands on the throttle, leaving the pits. And as he passes Cale Yarbrough's pit, he may have seen Yarbrough's crew with a signboard ready to give him a stop signal. Yarbrough slowing down. He knows that Waltrip's made a 14-second stop. Yarbrough and Junior Johnson, the crew chief for number 11, know exactly how they plan to handle this final critical pit stop. They're gambling, the tires are okay. It looks like one can of gas, no more than 11 gallons, and go for it. Long before the gas can is empty, Kale heads for the door. Yarbrough's car was standing still, only four and three quarter seconds. Yarbrough guns it back out of the track, trying to accelerate without spinning his wheels and wearing away rubber that's already thin. Yarbrough moves into the first turn ahead of Darrell Waltrip. There's Waltrip running flat out. But he's not going to catch Yarbrough on this lap at least. Yarbrough's up to speed and coming onto the main straightaway with a lead that's about a third of a lap. Ten seconds. Waltrip has fresh tires, and he's proven that he's as fast or faster than Yarbrough. Can he run Kale down in the few laps that are left? Junior Johnson, mastermind of Yarbrough's crew, stands quietly in the pits with the look of a man who has everything in hand. The radio that connects him to Yarbrough is quiet. There's no need to plan anymore. Just drive it, Kale. Drive it. Yarbrough's doing just that. He's run more than 6,000 competitive miles on this track during his career. He eases off the throttle just a bit, and Waltrip picks up a full second. But that's not going to be enough. Unless his car breaks, Yarbrough's got it won. But he's crashed as often as he's won on this track, so Yarbrough's not about to let his mind wander. Petty's car is in the pits, and Dave Marcus is back in the fast chair. Richard's worn out by wrestling it through the turns. Even the padding under his uniform didn't cushion the G-load as the car turned left. Yarbrough is cruising the last two laps. Coming off the backstretch, he'll be looking for the white flag at the finish line. And there it is, signaling one more lap to go. 32 more seconds. Four more left turns to complete 367 laps. Although Waltrip's closed to within five seconds, Yarbrough's going to win this race if he keeps it running another half lap. Yarbrough's winning game plan was simple. Stay out of trouble in the early laps. Race with men you can trust. Give everybody else a lot of room. Make your pit stop a little faster than the next man. And always use your head. And there's the checkered flag for Kale Yarbrough. It's four hours, 17 minutes since the green flag waved. Kale can coast around now to meet his crew in victory lane. Coasting has never been Kale's style. Thirteen years ago, Kale was charging for the lead when this racetrack almost chewed him up and spit out the pieces. He was running wheel to wheel with Sam McQuag when suddenly Kale Yarbrough went flying out of this racetrack. As Kale steps from his car in victory lane, the first man ever to win the Southern 500 four times, he has to have some memory of that moment. There's nothing as great as coming back from defeat to win the Southern 500. Kale's wife and some of the Arboro children are in victory lane to help celebrate. There's the winner's trophy and a check from Barney Wallace, president of the Darlington Raceway. Kale takes home $30,000 this afternoon. That prize money doesn't have far to travel. The Yarborough clan lives just down the road a piece in Timmonsville, which proudly calls itself the home of Kale Yarborough. Next year, Kale will likely be racing for his fifth victory. And the crowds that seem to grow each year will be back with Kale for the Southern 500.